Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of rate of change, specifically how we can find the rate of change when given a graph, and we'll do it in 5 minutes or less. So we have a word problem here talking about Carlos. He starts with $2, and then he saves the same amount of money from his allowance each week. And so we're looking for the rate of change. And so we see it graphed here. So our money saved is going to be our y-axis right here. And you see he starts right there at $2. And then each week he saves the same amount. And so you see it's counting by twos there. So there's my one. All right, there's my two. I've got my three right here. But it tells us specifically what we're looking for, the rate of change of the money he has saved with respect to the number of weeks. Okay, so the rate of change of money with respect to the number of weeks. So that's a weird way of asking you to find how much money he saves each week. So we can view it as a ratio there, money over weeks, right? And what is my money? Well, my money is going to be uh, on the y-axis. And then my number of weeks is going to be on the x-axis. So I'm looking for how much we change in the y-axis over how much we change in the x-axis. Does that look familiar? Hopefully that does because the rate of change is asking you to find the slope, the change in y over the change in x. So all we need are two different points, right? So let's start with just uh, our starting point, our y-intercept, 0, 2. And then we've got this point right here, which looks like it's going to be an x of 2 and a y of 7. Right? And then we just label that x1, y1, x2, y2. I can choose two other points if I want to. So we know how to do this. This is y2 minus y1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. I'm looking for the change in y over the change in x. So that's going to be 7 minus, and then my y1 is 2, and then 2 minus 0. So what I'm going to get is 5 halves, or 2.5. Since we're dealing dollars and cents, looks like he's saving 250 per week. Let's look at another example. Now we have a cup, holds a liter of water. So you see we have our starting right there at one liter, that's our y-intercept, and has a hole that causes it to lose water at a steady rate. So we have a constant rate of change here of the remaining volume with respect to elapsed time. So once again, it's asking us to find the remaining volume. All right, so look at my re remaining volume. That's my y-axis. And then with respect to elapsed time, so we've got it doesn't say time, but we know that hours is a unit of time. That's my x-axis, so it's the same thing. I'm looking for the rate of change. So when I'm looking at the remaining volume over the uh, elapsed time, the number of hours left, I'm looking for the change in y over the change in x. So you guessed it. It's just asking for slope again. So if we think of rate of change, it's just another way of asking for m. Right? If we think of our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, we even have our b right here. Right, This is a y-intercept of 1. So all we need to do is find some points here. So let's start with our y-intercept of 0, 1. And it looks like we got a point right there. 4 hours, we are at 0 0.5. Okay, So x1, y1, x2, y2. And so let's do 0 0.5 minus 1. And this is 4 minus 0. All right, so I'm going to get negative 0 0.5. And that makes sense because it is a downward slope over 4. And so if we want to um, make that into a decimal, we would go ahead and just divide up. And we'd be negative 0 0.125. Right? You would divide your 4 into 0 0.5, and if you just keep doing that, you would get your 0 0.125, and that is our rate of change.